This interview with Marco Ruggiero took place October 4th, 2012 in Wichita, Kansas, while he was attending the Reardon Clinic's IVC and Cancer Symposium. I've known you for a couple of years now on the internet. This is the first time we've been able to meet, and, and it's such a, um, such a pleasure for me, and kind of I'm pretty excited about it. And uh, um, I have a lot of friends, in the, especially in the uh, age dissident community, friends who are gay men who are dealing with an HIV positive diagnosis, mm -hmm. who are questioning what they need to be doing for their health. Some of them are healthy, no signs. Others are not in a very good way. Um, but we all, for some reason, seem to gravitate around that community that's commonly known as AIDS, AIDS dissidents or AIDS questioning. And of all the people I've met in the last three or four years that I've discovered that world, you seem more alternative than dissident, if you all, if you understand my drift. And I, I'm, I'm, would like you, I'd like to ask you, what do you, what do you think causes AIDS? Well, this is a very difficult question, and as you know, people have been questioning this point, uh, not only in the dissident community, but also in the so-called mainstream community for uh, 26 years now. As you may remember, Professor Luc Montaigne has always been speaking about co-factors contributing to some extent to the development of AIDS. Because we have to remember that AIDS is a syndrome, so it is not a single disease, therefore it is difficult to find a single cause. I often uh, like to draw a comparison with cancer. If you ask me what causes cancer, what is the cause of cancer, of course the answer has to be multifactorial. Uh, let's take, for example, lung cancer. Everybody seems to know that uh, smoking, cigarette smoking or heavy pollution is the cause, the cause of lung cancer. But uh, as an oncologist, I can tell you that this is not the truth, or at least this is not always the truth. And the statistics is clear. You have many, many smokers who do not develop lung cancer, and you have non-smokers, and also people who are not exposed to any type of pollution or air pollution, who do develop deadly lung cancer. So we can say that smoking increases the probability that you develop a cancer, and then there is a complex interaction between environmental factors, like smoking, for example, genetic factors, and also serendipity. Probably with AIDS as a syndrome, the situation is uh, very similar. And as you know, many HIV positive people do not develop AIDS. Right. They are called long-term progression. Nobody knows how many they are in reality, because you could know how many they are if you could test the entire population. And of course, this is not feasible, and I would say it's not even recommendable or not desirable. And then you have people who uh, discover to be HIV positive and develop AIDS within months or weeks. And then you have HIV positive people who stay perfectly well for, let's say, 20 years, and then out of a sudden develop some symptoms. So, of course, there, have to be, there has to be a number of factors, and we don't know exactly which factor plays which role. Not only that, there is, as always, a complex interaction between the external cause, if you want to call it like this, uh, the HIV, and uh, the internal milieu, as the old French scientists say. As Pasteur said to Charcot, it is uh, the, uh, what he called, uh, the field, uh, not the microbe, that is important, uh, the environment. The environment. So, he used this term like a field, like a real, like a corn field, since we are here in Kansas and there are many corn fields. So, Pasteur used to say that the microbe is not as important as the field where it is nurtured. And uh, since Pasteur is known as the father of microbiology, we can trust this term. Most likely, uh, with HIV and AIDS, uh, we are talking of a situation that is uh, similar to many, many other diseases. Let's take tuberculosis, for example. Uh, as an European, 
I was born in 1956. At that time, we are born the same year. Okay, how about so, that? <laughs> that's interesting. Some kind of karmic relationship. So, in 1956, uh, tuberculosis was rampant in Italy. It was only 11 years after World War II, very, uh, very heavy war on Italy, a heavy toll on the population. So, we were just recovering and tuberculosis was rampant. And as a matter of fact, myself, as I would say most of the people my age, had met the uh, bacillus of tuberculosis, the mycobacterium tuberculosis. The tuberculosis, you cannot talk about positivity as you do with HIV or HBV or many other viruses, because uh, you do not develop antibodies against tuberculosis, but rather it is called a cellular-mediated response. However, if I take an X-ray of my lungs, and I've done this many times for many reasons so, uh, during my life, I've been uh, subjected to X-rays, you can clearly see a little scar in the upper lobe that uh, testifies that uh, I have been infected by tuberculosis, there has been a reaction of my body against the mycobacterium tuberculosis, but my immune system has been strong enough to get rid, in this case, not of the virus, but of the bacterium. I don't know whether in a matter of weeks or what, since uh, it gave me no symptoms. So, uh, I could say that I am positive for tuberculosis, but I have not developed the disease and most likely I will never develop the disease. However, if I was uh, uh, in a situation of uh, nutrition deficiency, of immune deficiency for whatever reason, most likely I would not have overcome tuberculosis, and that's why tuberculosis is rampant in Africa where nutrition, hygiene, they are not uh, so good as they are in the Western world. So the uh, comparison with tuberculosis, I think, uh, is quite proper. Here uh, we can meet a possible pathogen, but again, how pathogenic is the mycobacterium tuberculosis? Uh, of course it is a pathogen, but it has not been pathogenic for me or for people my age. 